Dave Jones, we'd like to thank you for, for coming uh, to Uganda and investing here all these years. We'd like to ask, uh, uh, we've been talking about family as a church for the last five weeks. I'd just like to ask you some questions uh, from your pastoral ministry. I know you've been a pastor for many years. Uh, just uh, from your uh, pastoral ministry, just tell me, what are some things you've, you've seen in thriving families? What are those things that, that help families thrive as you, you've done ministry uh, in the church? Well, I think that uh, thriving doesn't just mean perfection. What it means is working together over the years to grow as a family and to develop uh, a love for the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so there is a commitment that you have as God's people to uh, grow in the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think those are families that thrive. Unfortunately, most of our families in the situations that we find ourselves only survive. Hmm. Instead of thrive, hmm. they want to survive. Hmm. And so I think loving God with all of our hearts, loving our neighbors, which means family members, as well as looking beyond ourselves to be able to see how God's at work in the world, as well as understanding the commitment we have to tell others about Jesus. I think families who know that as their major purpose thrive in this broken world. All right. Okay. Are there particular common uh, challenges you've noticed uh, in dealing with families in the church? Yes. I, you know, I think that uh, a lot of the relational issues come because of the pressures of, of our culture and the, the time demands, the work demands, the, the salary demands, the loss of jobs. COVID has really put a dent in the dynamics of a family because a lot of people have struggled. But it's, it's my commitment to understand as a pastor to help people to really begin to see the love that God wants them to have. And so as we raise children, husbands, the most important way you can love your children is to love your wife. Mm. Mm. The most important way wives can help uh, grow children up is to love their husbands and together you serve and work together. I think the challenge of time is very hard for all of us, but there needs to be a commitment to do that. I also think that when we see the privilege of living in this world, that we are able to see how God's at work, to look at the beauty of all that God has provided, that we begin to see the goodness of God in even the little things of our life. If we only look for the big things, we miss the grace of God every day. And so I think the heart of us as God's people is to check those challenges through the grace of God that will help us meet them. And there's hardships, mm. no question about mm. it. So really, I'm, I'm, it's one of the things you, you are saying is that sometimes we focus on the big things and yet love is expressed in the death, daily th things of, of life. Helping your wife uh, at the end of the day, uh, taking time to speak to your children, uh, being uh, concerned about how everybody's day went, the basic things of life that sometimes are ignored. That's right, yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So just tell me, uh, what about, we're really talking about the church, but you really are, have been married for how many years? 43 years. 43 years. Yeah. For you, what are some of those things that have uh, made you stuck with Joyce for 43 years? Well, oh, maybe, is it stuck or, no, or no, maybe no, that's a bad word? That's a bad word. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think the, the basic commitment that we have had as a husband and wife is to love Jesus with everything we do. That we are committed, not just because I'm a pastor, but because I'm a man, because she is a woman who loves Jesus and we want to work together as our commitment 
to worship him in everyday life. We have one child, and whenever I travel with Andrew across uh, Uganda, the question is usually, how many children do you have? <laughs> and when I say one, everybody goes, one, only one, why don't you have many? And I think we need to understand that every child is a gift, every person is a gift. Mm. We could not have children for a while, and God gave us our son, Matthew, who is now 35 years old. And we have, over these years, sought to raise him up with a big view of the world by faith in Christ. And uh, it's been a journey, not always pleasant, not always easy, but we have trusted God to lead us in those times. Okay, so you really are saying, one of the things you are saying, this relationship with God the Father really can make a relationship to one another beautiful. That's where you really, uh, uh, your beginning point for relationship to one another yeah. is, is really relationship with the Father. And I think once we realize that we have been forgiven, mm. it's easier, not mm. easy, mm. it's easier to forgive one another when uh, we see the grace of God in our lives. Okay, yeah. sometimes we have a self-righteousness that prevents us from seeing, uh, from being gracious to other people. That's Once right. we have experienced the forgiveness that God gives us, then we know that we are, we are sinners helping other sinners. Uh, I mean, we are like beggars helping other beggars to know where to find bread. Right. Yeah. And the other, the other thing about raising a child is that they can be self-centered like all of us. Mm. I think when we begin to raise a child so that, that they are the center of the world, we are not honoring God that mm -hmm. way. Mm. Self-centeredness is sin. And so we need to begin to help our children learn to ask for forgiveness, to, to understand that sin impacts the world, mm. so that we are careful of what we watch, who our friends are, and all of those things that have impact on our life need to be seen through the lens of God's grace. All right. Uh, I, I have one last question for you, Dave. Uh, um, in, in any church, and in today's church, we have more and more single people. Uh, what do you say to single people in a world that makes them feel uh, really less important because they are not married, in a world that doesn't always give them a voice because they are not married, how would, and, and, and in Africa, the culture is even much stronger than your culture. The, the, how do they feel valid? And, and how, how, what do you say to single people in the world that, that, only has, that doesn't always have respect for the unmarried? As a pastor for so many years, all I did was try to affirm people that they have been made in the image of God. Mm. Not because they're married, not because they have children, but every individual has worth in God's eyes. Mm. And so my commitment as a pastor was whether you are married, whether you are single, God has a purpose for your life. We have tried with students to help them trust God in the major decisions of life. And marriage is one of those. Mm. Having children in a marriage relationship is the proper way to have children. Mm. But just because you are single doesn't mean that you don't have worth. God has given us worth because we are made in His image. And if we begin to lose that sight, we will make other things important so that we will not sense the love of God as we should each day and have our worth found in Him. Amen. Uh, I, I was going to ask you, Dave, uh, in the church we have single, pe single parents. They are single parents because they had a spouse who passed, or they are single parents because they, uh, they had a, ch a child out of wedlock, or they are single parents because they are separated from their, their father of, uh, or mother of their children. Uh, so what do you say to, to the people like that and to the church? Well, I think I, I would particularly speak to the church. And I would say that God has given us an opportunity to be a family, 
that goes beyond a nuclear family, but to the, the family of the, the people of God. And so many situations in life are hard. Mm. The loss of a spouse is very difficult. And raising a child on your own is very difficult. I think uh, what you begin to see is the need for the church to step up and be able to uh, fill in some of the gaps. And for those who have children out of wedlock, that's a, a choice that you have made and there are consequences to those types of choices. However, the church needs to step up and the people in that family need to realize that they have responsibility too to nurture and grow their children in the ways of God. So I think the family of God has impact on all of the families that make up the family of God. Okay. The family of God must have the grace to embrace everybody, must have the, the attitude of care to, to support everyone in their situation. They, 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 sometimes the family of God gets stuck in the judgment mode right. and they're not able to extend either the grace or the care or whatever the, the response is appropriate to nurture, to be part, part of the nurturing family that helps families that fall through the cracks. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, Dave. We, we'd like to look forward to, to Sunday and for the opportunity to, to continue to explore uh, these issues. We pray that as we, we've, we've focused on the family in the last five weeks, that you would, you would take the time to review where God has, has uh, where you are with God in, in the way you're managing family, whether you are single, whether you're, you're married, that you're, you're asking God to help you review your convictions and so that you are making the right choices in line with God's design for family. God bless you. Thank you for, for, for uh, being here.